You're listening to All Hands, a podcast brought to you by Lattice, where people strategy is business strategy. I'm your host, Caitlin Holloway. They want connection, but they want flexibility. They're like, I want to work when I want to work, where I want to work. I want that flexibility, but I also really crave connection. Those two are often at odds and in direct conflict with one another, right? So how do we create this environment where you can give them both? Disconnection and disengagement. They're on the rise in the workplace. A Gallup poll said 18% of employees were actively disengaged last year. You heard that right. Not just disengaged, but actively disengaged. So what do we do about this as people leaders? One company says the solution is to completely rethink how we connect and engage with our employees. That's requiring just a different way of thinking and constantly challenging yourself at every turn and corner to be like, okay, is this working? Am I listening? Did I hear the feedback? It's not? Okay, shoot. So now we really have to come up with something different. And that's, you know, it's a beautiful and fun time, but it's, yeah, it's also a really challenging time. This week on the podcast, I unpack the employee engagement secrets at Vimeo with Chief People Officer Crystal Boyson. She's an expert in building intentional company cultures. Crystal drives employee engagement at Vimeo, the video streaming company with more than 260 million users. Prior to her work at Vimeo, she was the global head of people at Canva. Crystal shares her tips on how to engage employees in a hybrid or remote environment, how to motivate the incoming workforce, and how we can level up our messaging. Spoiler alert, yep, It includes videos. Crystal, welcome to All Hands. Oh, thank you, Caitlin. I am so thrilled to be here and am very much looking forward to chatting today. So thanks again for having me. Employee engagement is something at the top of every people leader's agenda right now, and for good reason. And now you have been in the people and HR game since I think like 2005, which means that you have seen a lot of workplace fads come and go. How is the current trend in employee engagement different than previous years? I think the thing that stands out to me right now is really with overall engagement is that we're seeing a decline. Like we had an upward trajectory for like over the last decade, which was incredible. And that's what you want to see as an HR leader, right? Our employees are getting more and more engaged year after year. This is wonderful news. We should be celebrating. Well, that's really taken a turn in the last two years. And I think that for me is top of mind is why, why is that? What do we need to be doing differently to really re-engage not only new employees as we bring them on, but also our existing employees. Like I am a big believer in this concept of needing to re-engage employees as they're with you for a while. I think it was a Gallup study recently in the last two years, since really the end of the pandemic, end of 2020 to 2021, and then into 2022, we've seen a decrease by two to four percentage points overall in engagement, which again, from an HR perspective, we're going absolutely the wrong direction. So that macro trend is really alarming to me. And then when I looked at, you know, some of the data that we're seeing from, you know, the reports I've read and research, it's very aligned to what we're seeing in our own data at Vimeo as well. It was right. The highest declining areas were around clarity of expectations and your role connection to the mission and the purpose of the company. So that connection was a big theme that I saw, as well as like opportunities to learn and grow is always one of our areas that is the highest driver of engagement. But yet we're also seeing the greatest decline year over year, as well as the one that really stands out to me is just feeling cared about at work. That one has significantly declined year over year. So I think for me, it's those are all indications that employees like the headline there are feeling more disconnected from their company, from their job, from their team, from everything that matters at work, right? And really drives engagement. And to me, this comes down to a communication and connection issue that we need to address. So what does engagement actually mean to you and your team at Vimeo? Yeah, look, it sometimes seems like it's that elusive, like North Star that we're always chasing, right? Especially in HR. It's that like golden metric of engagement. But for me, in the simplest form, I look at it as It's the connection that we create with our employees. It's have we captured not only their minds, but also their hearts. And I know that sounds a little soft and HR-ish, but I actually think that's the truth. Like it's that connection that employees, that you create between an employee. And it goes both ways, their connection to the company and to what you stand for and your mission, but also like our connection that we create with every one of them to make them feel like human beings again in the workplace, right? So it's like, it is in the simplest form, it's capturing both their hearts and minds. So we have that connection that goes both ways. So that's how I look at engagement and and like to think about it and talk about it. I also think it's really important to think about how employees feel at work. 
again, not to go too soft, but like we often, it's about productivity and efficiency, which are incredibly important. Don't get me wrong. But it's also really important that they find some joy in their work and they come and they feel fulfilled and they have a feeling of purpose and all those things. So I think it's really balancing some of the harder things that drive engagement, like, you know, you want to come to work and do great work and be productive and all of that. But it's also the softer things, too. And I think finding the beautiful balance of the two is really important. And we often, as companies, I think, and leaders over index on one or the other. Right. And it's difficult sometimes to find that nice balance. I'm so glad to hear you use words like feelings. What you're talking about is really the core and the critical component of enabling our employees and enabling ourselves to really feel that sense of belongingness, right? Feel. That is a sentiment. It is a feeling that we live and breathe and bring to us with work every day. And As I'm out advising founders in my own portfolio company and friends that are building companies and chatting with other HR leaders out in the space, this is the thing that I think has been brushed aside and tossed out by most companies because, you know, we finally have convinced everyone that HR is a strategic function, right? And so in order to do that, we had to, and I think this was necessary and I think it's an important part of our work, really demonstrate the focus on business outcomes. And when you're focused on business outcomes, you have to learn how to speak the language of leadership. And leadership, especially in a tech company, you're sitting there and you're talking about OKRs, KPIs, you're talking about these drivers. To your point of companies will either over or under index on the feeling part. And you keep apologizing for it to be soft, but The reality is, is that's the human side. And if we don't acknowledge it, and if we don't address it, and we don't nurture it, give space for those feelings to live and breathe, the reality is, is is they are, they're going to live somewhere anyway. They're going to manifest themselves in the back channel, in the dark corners of the virtual office that we've created, because we are human and a uniquely human quality is that we feel. And so by creating the safe spaces, the spaces where people have psychological safety to be able to put that, and then for you to say, I see you, I hear you, and this is how we are going to address that. Whether it's you're going to continue to do something, you're going to stop doing something, you're going to start doing something. All of those things matter in that employee experience, which is the biggest thing that clicks in engagement. And so... I didn't mean to soapbox there. I just really hate it when companies forget about feelings. <laughs> well, I love it. And thank you. Because I also need to just, I thought, I liked what you said about stop apologizing. Because I think it is around, it's both, right? You can do both. Because you better believe we are a high-performing HR organization who's driving business results and, and accelerating the business. You better believe that. But we're also, we know how to do the other part too and take really good care of our people. And I think that's that's that beautiful balance that we're trying to achieve and want to create. I love it. Let's talk about listening. What role do you think listening plays in your employee engagement strategy? Look, it's so important. It underpins everything that we do from a people team perspective. At the crux of it, it's listening to our customers, which are, in our case, our employees. So we're very much, I like to think of us as a product organization. HR has traditionally been, you know, the check the box organization that just does the thing that we always do because we're supposed to versus like, Let's stop and really talk to and hear our customers, again, aka our employees, about what they need and want, what's actually going to provide value and impact for them in their day-to-day work. We also try to actively listen through many different mechanisms, like we have an Ask Vimeo kind of open forum via Slack where you can ask us anything and we answer We have feedback forms and facilitate that through one-on-ones with managers and their team leads. We also do retros and feedback on all of our major program launches as an HR organization. So we just always, to us, it's a, a consistent listening feedback loop that's always open. And I can tell you, we know when we haven't listened because we don't get it right. And then the most important thing, and of course, employees can have survey fatigue and feedback fatigue. So the best way to offset that, obviously, is to actually do something and action what you're hearing. And I think that's the most important part of all of this. You can listen all you want, but unless you actually take the information and what you're learning and then apply it and do something with it and action it, I think that's the most critical part in my mind. I appreciate that very much. I think talking to both our wins when we get it right and our losses is also really important. I want to shift gears a little bit to managers 
now. So it sounds like you have a great culture of listening and treating HR like a product and understanding that your customer are your employees. Let's talk a little bit about the roles that people play. I've heard your CEO, Anjali Sood, say something to the effect of the traditional managerial model is failing us. It's time to adapt how we as leaders show up and connect with our employees. I want to get a little deeper into that, given that this is something your CEO is saying out loud, not just internally, but externally. What are some of those new ways that you are operationalizing connecting with your people? What does that look like? Yeah, I love that Anjali's out there talking about this because we are so aligned and it's so true. Look, it's two things for us. It's what we communicate. We, we try to be really intentional. We really try to simplify our messaging. We're a highly transparent company and Anjali sets the tone at the top and how she expects all of us to communicate. And then one of our principles that we live day in and day out is be real. And I think that shows up in how we communicate as well and what we communicate. So, you know, we have the what, but we also more importantly focus on the how we communicate, because I think to me, that is what is so important right now. And when we talk about how we connect with employees, part of that is how we communicate to them. How do we treat them? Do we treat them like human beings who are fully capable of making their own decisions and sharing trust and vulnerability with them? And the answer is yes, that's how we want to treat our employees and we want to show up for them. And for us, that's how we build connection is through some of that how we communicate to them. Like we, again, are very transparent and we like to believe that we try to be as vulnerable as possible and open and honest and authentic. So then they feel comfortable and have the safe space to do that in return, right? So we're creating this culture of transparency and authenticity and creating connections and belonging. So one of the things that folks just love about Vimeo is that we have every single new hire do a newbie video. They do it as they join. So within the first week, and we really give no constraints. We're just like, pop on a Vimeo. We want you to make a minute or two video just to help us understand and learn about you as a human being. We don't want your resume history and all that. But besides that, like anything and everything about yourself, hobbies, family, partner, whatever. And what we get back is just so amazing. And it builds connection with folks that you may not meet because we are, like many companies, fully we're global, we're hybrid, we're distributed all over the world. So we don't get to see each other in, off, in person all that often. So that alone creates a sense of connection of, wow, I really get to know someone that I wouldn't get to meet in person based on this video. And from that generates relationships, generates these connections, like clubs have formed around, hey, I saw you are an avid tennis player, or you love dogs, or you drink a lot of wine in your newbie video. And then that's like, you know, I like that too. <laughs> Let's be, you know, Slack buddies and, and do that sometime over Zoom or whatnot. So that we found has really created this yeah sense of connection and belonging right off the bat in week one, like literally day one sometimes for newbies, which is really, really great. The other thing that's really important for connection for us is We want folks, what we see in the workplace right now in terms of engagement is flexibility is really important. Folks want to kind of work when it works for them to some degree, right? We all have really busy, probably hopefully fulfilling lives outside of work. And so we want to be able to find that balance isn't the right word, but fit between the two. And so really leveraging Again, video for asynchronous type communications. We always, we have really what we like to believe are engaging state of the Vimeos, which are our all hand meetings where we bring everyone together. But of course we record it and if folks can't watch it, they can do it in their own time. You know, so it's like little things like that that are intentional about seeing people in a very human, authentic way is really like at the crux of it. Again, it's just as much as what we communicated as it is how. And I think that honesty, transparency, Video allows for this human expression to come through more than in writing. And I think that really helps build connection when you're all around the globe and don't get to see each other in person. I have to be honest with you, Crystal. I have talked with so many incredible people leaders. I've had the privilege and pleasure of partnering with so many incredible founders. And one common denominator for me that I've discovered in companies that really have these high-performing inclusive, diverse cultures that their employees love is that they actually use their own product and they let their product help shape and give give structure and framework to how they're operationalizing their culture. And so to hear you say that you're using video in a really unique way within your workplace tells me that y'all are getting many things very right. Every company is super unique, and what works for this company may not work at the next, which is why when we take our playbook as leaders from one company to the next, 
it's not a copy paste. And it makes my heart so happy to hear that your employees are doing exactly what they should be doing with it without you saying, now employees, you should go out and find and make five authentic connections. Like, no, that's not how that works. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, it doesn't work like that, does it? Yeah, no, we love it too. We get value not only, as you mentioned, on the cultural side and the people side, but also employees using our own product helps make our product infinitely better. You better believe we're giving that feedback loop to the product team of like, we'd really like to be able to do this. And what about this next? And being able to inform the roadmap as well is pretty cool, if you ask me, because we have lots of ideas and love being able to be the first people in to be using the product as well. Okay, we're going to shift gears a little bit to something that you mentioned earlier about the Gallup poll that you you recently read. And there is a component to this one. I'm assuming we've read the same one that actually is talking about the engagement more explicitly or specifically about Gen Z. So Gen Z, the youngest generation in the workforce with Gen Alpha nipping at their heels, every generation loves to pick on the the youngest generation to come into the workforce because they're the ones who are shaking things up, right? They're the ones saying, y'all have been doing it like this. That's not working for us. And so I would love to hear your thoughts and perspective on Gen Z in the workplace and how they are feeling engaged at this point. Do you have any thoughts and feelings on Gen Z engagement? Uh, I have so many thoughts and so many feelings. (laughs) Those feelings, you know, they get you. Feelings, there they are. (laughs) Those feelings, uh, they're, they're coming up again. Look, again, in our data, it mirrors what we're hearing and reading and all the external research that's out there and the reporting that Gen Z has one of the lowest engagement rates across any of our working generations, which, and they're also becoming, quickly becoming one of the largest parts of our workforce. And they're climbing up the ladder or the jungle gym, whatever you have in your organization and becoming in roles of influence, right? So this is something that if it's not top of mind as a people leader, you're, you're probably not thinking about the right things. Here's what I love. So one, I don't love that they're the most disengaged group. We need to solve that. And I think it's for a lot of the reasons that we talked about up top, like What I know to be true about Gen Z is that they prioritize different things. They care about different things. Different things matter to them and drive their engagement. So again, it goes back to that listening. Are we listening to them? Are we hearing about what they need and want? You know, an interesting stat is the number one driver of of their engagement, similar to others though, isn't pay. As as much as people think compensation is the reason I stay at an employer, it's not. It's not for Gen Z in particular as well. But they want career growth opportunities. They want to be learning and developing. They want to be growing themselves. They want to feel cared for at work. They want to be acknowledged as a whole human being who has needs and wants that are fulfilled outside of work. They want to be shown appreciation for their mental health and their overall well-being. You know, again, it's that growth and development and they want to have connections and relationships at work. And so I think that's a big part of it. And then also they just grew up in a different world in terms of access to information systems, like how they process. And for them, it's like, bite-sized chunks of information, when and where and how they need it kind of thing versus a big lengthy email or this big formal state of the union address, you know, for hours, isn't how they're going to digest information. So I think it's about navigating, dissecting what they're telling us they need and want, and then adjusting how we communicate with them, how we engage with them, what kind of programs we deliver to meet their needs. I don't have the silver bullet. If any leader does, I'd love to chat with them. But I think it's about, you know, slowly addressing and listening to what they need and want and, and and making sure that you're adjusting your programs and customizing them to them as well as other folks. I think when you listen to engagement or you read engagement data and listen to the feedback, it's important to also dissect it by those different demographics, whether it's workforce or gender or all those things, because I think that's the unlock is being able to get really focused and like marketing has personas. We as HR organizations need to really tune into the personas of our employees, which, you know, Gen Z has a persona of their own in terms of what they need and want and what works for them. So I think ideally getting more and more customized and individualized for our employee base is a direction we need to head overall to help drive engagement, but especially in the Gen Z workforce. I could not agree more. As you're looking at this cohort, as this persona, are you finding that your Gen Z population is more interested in hybrid and remote work or more interested in in in-office and live experiences? So it's an interesting mix. I can only speak to the data that I've seen from our own Vimeo-specific data, but they want connection, but they want flexibility. They're like, I want to work when I want to work, where I want to work. I want that flexibility. 
but I also really crave connection. Those two are often at odds and in direct conflict with one another, right? So how do we create this environment where you can give them both? Because I think they're not alone in that. Like, I'm definitely not Gen Z, and I definitely want both those things too, right? So how do we do that? And I think that's what many of us haven't quite figured out the, the best way to do that that's, you know, cost effective. So it's like, we have to figure out a way to how do you build connection when you're not physically together? And what does that connection look like? And how is that different, but yet still incredibly meaningful to create that fulfillment? And so, you know, I think that's, again, one of the areas where, okay, Vimeo, video, we use video because we do believe like that is one of the best unlocks that we found because it's the best way outside of literally you and I being together in a room Because video also allows that flexibility, right? So it's like, okay, flexibility and connection. we got to find that middle ground. We believe that video is a good power tool for that, but we know there's more than that too. So that unlock is the million dollar question. I mean, truly, if if you're doing the Venn diagram of both of those things and trying to figure out what sits in the middle, again, when you're building your programming or you're trying to operationalize strategies to increase that engagement, it's a small, it's a slim, slim little bucket. It feels very tiny. (laughs) feels like, yeah, you're shooting a dart at like a tiny little target there, but it's so important. So, I mean, I'm not going to give up, but yeah, it is a tough one. I'm going to keep practicing, keep shooting, see if I can hit that bullseye, but it's an important one to solve. So in a world where video is the cornerstone of kind of challenging traditional communication styles within the workplace to increase engagement, what are some other strategies or programs that you've put into place? Programs are such an incredible tool as long as they're created and developed with, again, the employee at the heart of it and the center of it. And we have done our job at being a very customer-centered organization to deliver something. I think one of the most important programs that an HR organization can deliver is their onboarding program, right? To me, that is a cornerstone of the first impression and moment that an employee joins is like, that's where you can start to capture their hearts and minds, right? That's where engagement starts. Day one, how you show up to them and engage them is critically important. So what we're trying to do is really revisit and look at our onboarding programs to say, are we doing everything we can to create connection, communicate clearly we're really doubling down on the how and the feelings and the connection, which is a bit of a pivot from what we've traditionally done in onboarding in the past. So I think that's a big unlock for organizations. And coming in our workforce, we have a lot of Gen Zs coming in and it's like, okay, we know they're used TikTok or bite-sized videos. So we're trying to make our onboarding program interactive. So we have an interactive video program where it's like, choose your own onboarding adventure. Do you want to start with learning about IT, the people department, your department goals, our overall strategy. You want to hear from Crystal first or Anjali? I can tell you, we look at the data. I've never once won that one (laughs) to choose between. So I think there's something really powerful there of setting the stage right when an employee joins, but also then giving them the flexibility to kind of say, this is what I want to learn, when I want to learn it, and how I want to learn it. Obviously, then how programs show up in terms of driving engagement. One of the biggest drivers for us is L&D, learning and development. What kind of growth opportunities do I have? And we believe that managers are an incredible unlock for engagement as well. So we're doubling down on manager development in particular and building the most wildly successful managers that we can. I mean, that's not new news, but I think folks often don't focus enough time and energy on that population. And then, of course, like for us, it's about recognition, performance. It's like the, but I would kind of say the standard HR programs, but we're trying to make them as unstandard, non-boring, more impactful as humanly possible and, and getting to the heart of, In all those programs, what are we doing to intentionally create connection, to simplify our communication around it, to make it feel like it's really providing deep value to every employee? Because what we don't want, and again, I think we've all been guilty of HR just being sort of viewed as that like, oh, HR put another program out. I'm going to do it because they need me to check that box, but my behavior is not going to change as a result. It's not going to make work any better or me any more successful or effective at my job. And that's what we want to avoid. One thing I love about our CEO, she also talks about this out in the public is like nothing sacred here. There's no such thing as status quo. And I really love that. It challenges me and my team to go out and and think really big and differently about all of our programs, which is fun and exciting. I mean, that's the beauty of the work that we get to do, especially at this particular moment in time, right? 15 years ago, it really was about the reinvention of HR, you know, rebranding from HR to people and culture to flash forward to where we are today, which is the dawn of a new era. And you, Crystal, and 
colleagues in the space that are also running and leading the people and culture teams really have no playbook to run from. You are not pulling out pages from the days of yore because the world is fundamentally different than what it was even four years ago. And then really bring that back around to be that bleeding edge of this is what a healthy, multi-generational workforce that is remote, distributed, hybrid, whatever we're calling it today, can really be successful. So I, I think it's an incredible moment in time for our industry. It is. I mean, it's exciting, but it's daunting as well, because you're right. There is no like, I'm just going to pull yeah, this playbook out and run this play. It's like, nope, that, to your point, that doesn't exist. So it is, it's requiring just a different way of thinking and constantly challenging yourself at every turn and corner to be like, okay, is this working? Am I listening? Did I hear the feedback? It's not? Okay, shoot. We can't do it again then. So now we really have to come up with something different. It's a beautiful and fun time, but it's, yeah, it's also a really challenging time. And we got to get it right because our employees are telling us right now that we're not right? Because engagement scores are going down across the board. This is where I want Vimeo to be really different. So I'm like, all right, challenge accepted, roll up the sleeves and we, you know, got to get to work, but it's not an easy road ahead. It genuinely sounds like Vimeo is out there on that cutting edge, making things different and, and sharing. I think that that's something that is also really important to point out about how you are choosing to work as an organization is not just doing this in a vacuum. Let's trade notes. Let's share. This is something we tried and failed. This is something we tried and we're seeing early successful metrics around it. Like, let's plus it up. Let's help one another and be better and really link arms because that is what we did to graduate our function and therefore graduate our businesses to this next chapter of success. And so, one, I just want to commend you for putting it out there and for really doing your best in a very earnest and authentic way to say, we can be better and we can do better. Okay, are you ready for rapid fire? I guess I'm in the hot seat. I'm ready. Hot seat. You can do it. I trust you. <laughs> okay, we've talked a lot about video, obviously, for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What is your favorite movie, TV show, or Vimeo video? What do you have on repeat right now? Oh my goodness. It's a Vimeo video, and, and I'm not just saying that because it's absolutely hilarious. Have you seen that meme going around around a group of employees walk into their you know manager's office because they're like, it's performance reviews, and they do a dance? Yes. So my team was together just a couple of weeks ago in New York, and we totally recreated that. And it's the funniest. <laughs> I mean, I am biased, but it is the best video out on Vimeo at the moment. It's hilarious. Oh, my God. I love that so much. It's pretty incredible. There were some really great dance moves that took place on that performance video. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Second question. I'm going to take you back in time a little bit, knowing about your background. You worked in Australia, and you've worked for international companies. If you could hop on a plane, train, or automobile right now to take a trip, where would you go? Yeah. So I have two kids, one's six and one's four. And my four-year-old is learning about wild animals in school right now and uh, obsessed with our daily conversations are hilarious. What's faster, a warthog or a cheetah? The questions that are phenomenal. Girl, same questions in my house. Same. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to have to ask Google that one. So, uh, but we would hop on a plane, I think, to go to South Africa and go on a safari with the kiddos. Because I think the joy that they would see in seeing the wild animals. Also, my husband and I did last time we went on a safari was together on our honeymoon. So there's some sentimental value there. So by this time, we take the kiddos. Not quite as romantic, but I think they'd really enjoy the animals. What's not romantic about a warthog demonstrating in real life their actual speed and agility? <laughs> <laughs> last question. And this is a question that I ask every guest. When was the last time you were deeply proud of something you have accomplished? Oh, I love that question. So we had a, we do twice a year, we do a people and culture town hall where we invite the entire company. And it's literally just a little over an hour, an hour and a half of the people team sharing what we're working on, sharing initiatives. We just had that last one in this past April or our first one of this year in April. And I was just so incredibly proud of like, it wasn't me talking most of the time. It was the team sharing the amazing work we've done in Q1, the incredible roadmap we have for Q2, Q3 and beyond. And then we made it really uniquely Vimeo in the fact, one of our kind of principles for the year is to try to keep Vimeo a little bit more weird. Like it's about bringing that joy back in, the quirkiness. And so we are trying to lead by example 
and we made it pretty weird. I'm not going to lie. Not only was it wildly informative and we did a lot of, we had a lot of incredible work and just launched some huge initiatives to really simplify Vimeo and to make HR wildly simple and impactful. We had a video that we had made with breaking news that zombies attacked our headquarters in New York. I mean, it was, it was incredible. So I was wildly proud for a lot of reasons, but just, it was that moment of just sitting there feeling like we're building something really, really special here. And we've got the best team on the planet doing the work. And I just really, they're good humans too. So we're incredibly proud of the team we've built here was kind of the last one just recently. I love those moments when you can really kind of zoom out and say, this is it. This is it. This is why I get up out of bed every day. This is what makes coming to work a valuable use of my time. And reflecting on that pride and joy that you're finding in building a phenomenal workplace, right? This is why we do what we do. So I love that. That is so sweet. And I, I really like the idea of keeping Vimeo weird. That's right. Yeah. Our goal is we don't want to ever feel too corporate. And we want to make sure that we're all, again, being a wildly successful company, but yet also having a lot of fun and finding some joy back at work and creating those connections. And so, yep, it was fun. It was a lot of fun and it was really, really rewarding. Well, thank you so much for reflecting on that for us. We are proud of you too. And so Crystal, with that, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us on the show today. And please, please keep leading authentically. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you so very much for joining me on this week's episode of All Hands. I'm your host, Caitlin Holloway. Follow All Hands wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss an episode. And if you like the show, tell a friend about us or give us a shout on social. This podcast is brought to you by Lattice. Learn more about how Lattice helps companies deliver great business results with smart people strategy at Lattice.com. Find us on Twitter at LatticeHQ. All Hands is produced by Lattice in partnership with Pod People. Special thanks to our production team. Christine Swar, Annette Cardwell, Rachel King, Amy Machado, Hannah Pedersen, Danielle Roth, David Zwick, Carter Wogan, and Michael Aquino. I'll see you next time on All Hands. Until then, my friends, please keep leading authentically.